Hello and welcome back to another update where we cover the latest developments throughout the front line, starting out in the direction of the Zapatia front where we're seeing a lot of movement on both sides. The Ukrainian forces are focusing attacks on the northwestern parts of Robotine and in the direction of Verbove. Meanwhile, the Russian forces are counterattacking in the direction of Robotine as well as in the direction of Verbove. So according to the latest reports, that is literally two minutes old as of the recording of this video, the Russian forces managed to counterattack in the direction of Verbove, and according to the report, they recaptured two forest lines. So most likely they are referring to this one right next to Verbove and the next one. So there's a lot of fighting within the gray zone here in between Verbove and the Ukrainian positions. And according to that report, the fighting is still ongoing over the second forest patch as the Ukrainian forces started launching further units into this direction to prevent this Ukra Russian counterattack. So the current fighting is happening here by the second forest patch. The Russian forces are using infantry fighting vehicles and heavy artillery as well as air force and FPV drones to launch this counterattack. While the Ukrainian forces are gathering in platoon sized units of 10 to 12 soldiers accompanied with a few armored vehicles so it seems that they have gotten some across yet again so there's some armored fighting as well as infantry and our air support on the russian side and they are clashing here by the forest patch to the west of verbova so there's heavy fighting going on in the direction of verbova at the same time the fighting by robotina has also intensified as the fighting is ongoing by the tr trenches to the south and to the west of robotina if we take a look at the map with the trenches, we see that the fighting is ongoing here in the western parts by the trenches the Russians have under their control. And in the southern parts, they're taking place by the direction the Ukrainian forces have under their control. So there's a lot of fighting in this direction with the trenches on both sides. As the both sides are trying to storm these trenches to capture these positions, these are all located in the high grounds by the routine direction. Both sides are fighting on an even field. While on the Verbova direction, the Russians have the high ground from the southern direction, but from the eastern direction, they also are even field. So this is actually a fairly even battle. But what this shows is that the Russian forces are now counterattacking the Ukrainian forces at a large scale. This is not what we saw at the start of the offensive. At the start of the offensive, the Russians majorly withdrew, tried to hold their positions, but largely withdrew. This is how the Ukrainian forces launched attack after attack and managed to advance bit by bit. However, for the past few weeks, the Ukrainians have not managed to advance. The latest advance in the direction of Verbova took place on the 23rd of September. The latest advance in the Ramevsky Lech area took place on the 15th of September. So it's been two to three weeks since the latest advances by the Ukrainian forces, while the Russian forces have launched counterattacks in the north of Novokupivka, here to the south of Robotine in the direction of Pryotne, where they have yet again advanced today with their latest advance here to the northeast of Pryotne. We've also seen them advance to the east of Oroshina. So the initiative of the Ukrainian forces and their main push of the offensive that I've been talking about for a very long time doesn't seem it will happen because the Russians are now taking the initiative from the Ukrainians. In the direction of the Ramovsky Lech, we see that the Russian forces have fought and attacked and counterattacked over the past two weeks. That means for two weeks now, the Russians have had the initiative and the Ukrainians have been unable to take it back. Meanwhile, in the direction of Robotine, the fighting is now ongoing for that initiative because the Ukrainians have lost it. It is now contested. Neither side is able to decisively gain ground. The fighting is now taking place over the gray zones, not actual taking of territory. We have seen the Russians counterattack and recapture some position. And then we have seen the Russian forces being pushed back in the direction of Vipova, but only to a rate where the gray zone is expanding, not that the Ukrainian forces are advancing. So essentially what we are seeing now is that the Russian forces are heavily contesting the initiative. And this is a very major development because if they manage to take it from the Ukrainians, then that is it for the Ukrainian offensive. Then it ends right there. And if the Ukrainian offensive ends without them breaking through the first line of defense, then this is a major defeat for the Ukrainian forces because they've used up all of their offensive capabilities that have been built up for nine months in an offensive that didn't even take the first line of defense.
And not just that, if we take a look in the direction of Evdeivka, we saw that the Ukrainian forces started attacking in this direction towards Opitne, after which they managed to advance three parts, gain a foothold within the village, but then they were pushed out of the village. And now the Russian forces started bombarding these Ukrainian positions. And according to the latest reports, the latest bombardment included FAB 1500 bombs. Those are bombs with 1500 kilograms of explosive yield. That is three times more than the FAB 500. When the Russian forces started using those, that is when they managed to capture Bakhmut. So this is actually a very decisive development for the Russian forces because now they are able to bombard these concrete fortifications of the Ukrainian forces and destroy them much easier than with the FAB 500s, which was already a significant improvement for the Russian forces. The Russians are continuously developing their own weapons and they are mass producing those weapons. Also, someone commented in a previous video that when I talked about the Western expert who said that the Ukrainians managed to get a artillery advantage, then they talked about how the Ukrainians have accurate 25 kilometer range Excalibur guided artillery shells. Well, if you take a look at the Russian artillery shells, we see here that the Russian forces have the Krasnopol guided artillery shell. It is made from the 1986 Soviet army. They have been using it through all of their conflicts. And this one has a yield of 50 kilograms and it has a 152 millimeter diameter shell and it has a range of 25 kilometers. Krasnopol 20 kilometers, K155M 25 and Krasnopol D40 40 kilometers with that one. So the Russians also have matching artillery shells to that of the Ukrainian forces. The difference is the Russians built their own. They can manage the production of their own while the Ukrainians are relying on the Western support. And that Western support cannot keep up with the use of the Ukrainian forces. We see here this article by the Washington Post written on the 21st of August, so two weeks ago. As Ukraine flies through artillery rounds, US races to keep up because they are behind. They're lacking behind the Ukrainian needs. And this is not on a small scale, it's on a large scale. It is to the point that the entirety of the NATO alliance cannot produce what the Ukrainians need and spend every day. So they are continuously decreasing the amount of theory they actually have available, despite the Western supply. And at the same time, we also see that Jens Stoltenberg, the general secretary of NATO, said NATO ammunition depots emptied. They are emptying out their own ammo depots to send to Ukraine. And this was already back in June at the start of the offensive. But the offensive has been going on for four months. And the Ukrainians cannot suddenly increase their supplies just like that. They have to take years for the production capacity to increase. So the current rate of consumption is too much for the Ukrainians. And the Russians are able to keep up with what they have. So this continuous war of attrition is in Russia's favor. The longer it goes, the more difficult it becomes for the Ukrainians. This is evident with the offensive. It has been going on for four months. Yet all they've managed to capture is this part right here. And the Russians are now counterattacking. That means they have the capacity after the Ukrainian offensive to then counterattack on this small scale, although it is a small scale. This is not one that they have built up for. This is what they had readily available at the front. They may have rotated some troops, but the Ukrainians have rotated the brigade after brigade, with the latest one being the 82nd Air Assault Brigade, and they were fighting by Verbove, and now they are being counterattacked against. So the 82nd Air Assault Brigade is being pressured to fall back in the direction of Verbove. This is the newest one at the front. This is the one with the challengers. They are not able to hold their positions. So the current situation is not looking good for the Ukrainians because they're continuously being pushed by the Russian forces, they are unable to break through the first defensive line. And now they are even being pushed back. If we take a look in the northern direction, we also see that there is fighting back and forth in the direction of Evdivka, south of Marinka, direction of Bakhmut, and in the direction of the Luhansk Kharkiv area. But these are less intense and less important right now compared to the Saporizhia front. Because we are seeing that the only place, the only place where the hope of the Ukrainian offensive is continuing is in the direction of Robotina and Verbove. And now the Russian forces are counterattacking here. So the prognosis for this offensive is that it will end in a failure before they even manage to break through the first line of defense. And that is going to be all for this update. 
Thank you all for watching and have a great day.